Hello everyone and welcome to Simply Made Homestead. I'm Marion and today we are here with our quail eggs in our incubator. We are on day 14, which you can see here it's only three days left until hatch. It only takes 17 days to hatch quail and we are on day 14, which means it is time for lockdown. And I'm gonna show you just how to do that, where we need to have our humidity and what to look for. We are also going to candle our eggs today and see which ones are fertile and which ones have not, are not. Now, typically I will candle at about day seven or 10 on my quail and then leave them until day 14 and then come back and put them in lockdown. Um, I have not done that this time, uh, which is fine. You don't have to candle uh, before that time. But today we're gonna candle them Anything that isn't fertile, we're gonna pull out of the incubator and we are going to throw them away and then put the uh, good fertile eggs down into lockdown and get them ready for hatching. I have included in the description box below, it's a little article and it tells you, it has an egg on there, it has a demonstration and it has the lines like, um, so this goes with anything, with chicken eggs, quail eggs, um, with duck eggs where you can see at day seven, they should be, you know, if it's a fertilized egg, it should be about here, day 14 and so on. So it'll really, it was very helpful for me in the beginning and um, I'm sure it will be very helpful to you as well. Now, one thing that you look for when you were candling are veins. If you see veins, you know that that is a, a fertilized live um, egg or a, a chick in there that is growing and uh, it's a good egg, you, it's a keeper. One thing I can tell you, the quail eggs, the quail um, egg shells are much thicker than a chicken egg and um, so we do have to turn our humidity up a little bit more than what we would with a chicken egg and I'm gonna show you how to do that and it takes a really good candler. This right here, it's an Incubrite I will put a link to it in the description box below for you as well. Um, I started out with the, um, when I bought my incubator, the light came with it. And it was okay, and it works okay on uh, chicken eggs, but on quail eggs, forget about it. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't see in there. So I bought this, and this thing is amazing. I love it, highly recommend it, and check out that link if you need a good candler, because this one's good. And it, it's not expensive at all. It was, uh, I don't remember, I've had it for quite a while, but it was not a bad price. All right, so our eggs are still in the turner where the eggs are turning back and forth. So the first thing we're gonna do, I'm gonna unplug the turner. Now we do wanna keep them nice and warm, so we're gonna make this quick. We are just going to remove the turner here, right here. I'm gonna sit them right here in my lap for right now. And then one thing that we want to do I like to put, I had one for this one, and I don't know, it probably got thrown out. Um, it, this is shelf liner. It comes in a roll, and uh, you, at Walmart has it. That's where I got this. Comes in a big old roll, so you can use it for all kinds of things. But it works really, really good in your incubator. And I like to, I always, I always put it in my incubator on that hard plastic, because it's got that hard plastic for the flooring, and this is much softer, and it'll be much better on my little baby's feet. Now I had one already cut, and uh, I would use that white bottom there, because it comes out as a frame, but we had to wing it today, so. We're gonna put that in there, look at there. Beautiful, see how much better that is? It's so much, it's softer, cause you've got that old hard plastic and those big holes and those babies' little tiny feet. This is just such a much better option. Okay, now let's get our eggs loaded up. So we need to check them out before we do. We're gonna turn out the light and I'm gonna show you how to candle the eggs. So I am just going to do it like this right here. I hold my light, or I put my hand around the bottom. See, because it's like this, the light kind of, you can still see with this one. 
But do you see that? All that shows is a yolk at the top and it's clear down here. That is not a fertilized egg. So I'm going to set it off to the side. Now you see how dark that one is? Now this one, you may have to kind of really turn your, uh, put your hand around there. Let's see if I can come in from the top and be able to see it better. I really don't want to drop this one. This one is fertilized. Oh, there we go. You see that? You see how you've got that one little bit of light? That green color right there? That is the uh, air sac right there. You see how that is all the way up to the top? That one is completely fertilized and going to be a baby. See, here's another one that is not fertilized. You see how clear it is? Now, if it was earlier, if it was only seven weeks along, let's look for the air sac at the top. If it was only like seven days along, you would really be able to uh, see more space and more light, but you can very clearly see that air sac there. So that is a fertilized egg. See, and that one is very clear. Yeah, see that? So you know. Now, I don't turn my egg. I just move my flashlight from one end to the other. You can see that there. You can see the yolk. So, all right, guys. I am going to get these candled up really fast so we can get them in here and get them warmed back up. All right, so we had 18 that aren't fertile, and we have 22 that are. So I was just hoping for 50% with there being one male and 10 females, and we got a little more than that, so I am very pleased. Now, just we are not going to turn them anymore. We are going to let them sit there, and in a couple more days, about... Sometimes we want to start hatching a little early before the three days is up. We've got three days left on our incubator. So about 16, 17, 18 days out, they will hatch. Now we won't turn them anymore. We're going to let, let them lay there and we are not going to turn them. We're not going to move them. Don't open the incubator. Keep that humidity in there and keep it nice and warm. You can see it got all chilled off in there with us uh, having the lid off. So it's beeping because it's not at the temperature or flashing because it's not at the temperature where it needs to be. So it's gonna work really hard on getting it back up where it needs to be. Now, one thing that we do need to do, we were at like 47% humidity, I believe. We are going to add water to our humidifier to bring it up to 65%. Now, I know I haven't added water to this in a couple of days on this side, which this was the initial side. Remember, there's two sides to the uh, water reservoir in the bottom. I haven't added anything to that in a while, in a couple of days, so I'm going to add a little bit there. So, but now that we're at lockdown and we need to bring our humidity up to 65%, very gently, <laughs> because those reservoirs are very shallow. I'm going to turn it around here and we're going to add water to the back. Now I am probably going to leave this thing like this instead of the other way so that I will be able to get to it a lot easier. And as you can see, I just use a turkey baker, baster. It depends on your incubator, how you uh, get water in there. But this works for me. And I'm just gonna fill up that side with water. And guys, there is no way to know how much water to put in there. Just put you a little bit, cause um, you'll be surprised how quick the humidity will come up. Put a little bit. Check out the humidity, and then um, come back and add more if you need to, because it's, you can't, I mean, to take it out, to take the water out of there, um, you would have to take everything apart, and we really don't want to open it up um, and to chill off those eggs anymore. We want to keep it nice and warm and toasty in there. So just add a little bit and just 
play it. You know, see how it goes. Now, it's very important that you do keep keep a close eye on your humidity because like I said, those uh, quail eggs are, the shells are very tough. So we need to be sure and keep that humidity level up to 65% and it can go 65 to 70 will be fine. The humidity helps to soften the shells so the babies, when they start pecking to come out of there, it makes it a little bit easier on them. Now, the reason it's very important to keep your humidity where it needs to be is because if it goes up too high, the birds can literally drown in their shell. Now, because the eggs, they are porous and the moisture goes into the shell, and but if it gets too much moisture, it goes into, into the egg shell to where the babies, they just don't, they need that air sac that you saw at the top there. Make sure you keep a really good eye on your humidity. Plus, you're gonna be anticipating the hatching of the babies, and so it's real easy to keep a check and come keep looking in there and see what's going on. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, we would love to have you join us. We are building a homestead from scratch for the second time, and we have lots of things coming, so, be sure to hit that subscribe button, ring that bell for notifications so you won't miss any of the upcoming videos. If you would like to help us in any way, if you could share us with your friends and family and all across social media, we'd really appreciate it. All right, guys, until next time, happy hatching. Take care and God bless.